This episode of Bronco Week is brought to you guys by our friends at Five Star Tuning. Use the link in the description below for all of your Bronco customization and tuning needs. At the beginning of Bronco Week, we did a video on TFL Now asking you guys for questions about the brand new 2021 Ford Bronco. And we got like 700 of your questions in 12 hours. So in this video, we're gonna try to answer most of them. So stay tuned. Not most of them. Uh, some of them. The first question comes to us from Mark Blanchard, and he had a question about the transfer cases. Now the Bronco is a traditional four-wheel drive vehicle, and much like the Ford pickup trucks, it uses a transfer case that can distribute the power to the rear wheels or all four wheels, but it does that in a couple of different ways. Now the basic transfer case has two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high, and four-wheel drive low for those extreme off-road situations. It's worth noting though, you have to manually select between two high and four high. So if you're driving around in the winter time, you hit some snow, you're gonna wanna make sure to engage four-wheel drive high so you've got the power of all four wheels plowing you through the snow. Otherwise, you're gonna remain in just rear-wheel drive and that's gonna be a bad time. However, there is an upgraded transfer case available with an option called 4A. The A stands for automatic and in 4A, the vehicle will decide when it needs to be in two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive all automatically, so there's no switch you need to remember to turn if you're driving, for example, in the winter. And just to add to what Tommy was saying about the transfer case, yes, this fully automatic unit it is optional. It costs a little bit more, and it's using basically clutches to engage for the four all-wheel drive automatic mode. And they, actually, the ratio is a little bit lower uh, the ratio on this transfer case is about 3.07 to 1. If you didn't get this automatic uh, option for the transfer case, the other ratio is a 272. So you're not losing a lot of ratio, you're just gaining some convenience for an all-wheel drive, four-wheel auto mode. The next question comes to us from Matt Robertson and he asks about specifically about the 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder and the seven speed manual transmission that's available in the new Bronco. And he's asking about how it drives, what is it like? Well, I can describe what it is, but driving impressions will come later. Just in a few days on TFL car, Tommy and I have a full review of, the, of that specific powertrain, the 2.3 with a seven speed manual. And we did a zero to 60 and you will find out everything about it. But basically the way it works is you got your six standard manual gears for daily driving. Then there's a little plunger that you pull up. You can put it in reverse by going left and up, or you can put it in the crawler gear. This is a seventh manual gear, pull up on the plunger and put it to the left and down. That's how it works and it actually gets you that excellent crawl ratio for slow speed off-roading. Um, and uh, you can use it, well, I guess anytime. The next question has to do with the top. We have a four-door Bronco right here and we're gonna demonstrate how to remove the front and also the rear panels, cause that's pretty unique. Let's start with the top. So Robbie here and uh, Dave are gonna help us demonstrate how to pull the tops off and first you said Bring the windows down. Yep, first steps, windows down. One touch, that's pretty easy. Yeah. Awesome, cool, what's next? All right. So now driver's side first. Okay. You take this, you flip your lever that way. Yep. You take these quarter turns. You'll see they only turn halfway. First panel. Same as the driver. Now, if you've lived or owned with a hardtop Wrangler in recent years, you know that is not unusual to pull the front panels out, but the cool part about the Bronco is you can also pull the rear panels out individually, and they're gonna demonstrate how that works right now. All right, you're gonna have a lever here you pull down. You have a quarter turn here. Another quarter turn down here. here. Yep. And then you wanna get that lever right there. Okay. Look at that. So that's the other piece. Nice, now open air. So Andre, what you have there is the rear center portion panel. How heavy is it? Can you lift it up yeah, by yourself? Well, let's see. 
Okay, I can kind of easily lift it and I can kind of put it over my head. I'm not sure exactly how much it weighs, maybe, what, 40 pounds? Something like this, so it's not too bad. So this is really pretty unique. Now both the front and the rear occupants are in an open air experience. Uh, and the best part is there were no tools required, right? So you just flip some uh, quarter turns, undo some latches, and they pull right out. One person can do it by themselves. Um, this is a, a really big advantage, and I think this is how most folks are going to drive their Broncos around if they have a four-door and they want everyone to have some fun in the sun. But there is a step further as well where the whole rear end comes off uh, in one giant piece. Now one of the interesting things about this process is there's no actual center pillar or column here, the, the B bar, right, where the B pillar is, uh, unlike the competitors from Jeep where you've got, you know, that kind of blocking your view. They also have speakers in there though, it's worth noting, but I do really like this from a rear seat. It kind of transforms the open air experience um, and I gotta say, it was pretty quick and easy. So Robbie, you're holding the, uh, the Bronco toolkit, which comes with the vehicle. How many bolts are you gonna have to undo to pull off this rear section? Ten bolts. There's two on top and four on each side. Perfect. Right. And once you're fast at it. How long does this process usually take you? 10 minutes. All right, not bad. So one thing first that I'd like to point out is for your interior lights, yep. it's just one plug. Oh, sorry. And that sweeps over here and then there's actually a spot to put it so it's not dangling. Or no dust gets into it, yep, right? No dust. Okay. And then right here, this is for your washer solvent fluid for the back window. It's just one click and that comes over here and it snaps right in there so no dust gets in that. Okay. Sweet. Now you open up your toolkit here and you will see that it comes with the right Torx bit and the ratchet. See the sockets are even labeled Bronco so ah. you know it's Bronco. That's badass Andre. Now that you got all your bolts off, we'll grab them up, take them, they have a little spot right inside here for them. Stick them all in there. Up. Yep, zip them up. Put your ratchet away. Put your Torx away. Zip it up, now we'll put this in the glove box. So here we have the full convertible version of the Bronco. We've got all the roof panels removed. I have to say the team here obviously has done it a few times, but they got it done right quick. So it um, doesn't take very long at all. And you'll notice there's actually spots for these alignment dowels so that it's easy to get in the right position. And apparently that, that's a bottle opener, I guess. Before we get to the cargo space, which was another question we got, I wanted to point out something. Uh, this Bronco is available with a 35 inch tall tire from the factory, which is what this is. Actually, it's about 34.4 inches. You can kind of see this LT315 70R17, so it's a 17 inch wheel. This is a wild track model, so that's why it has a blacked out uh, wheel with a, a bead lock on it. And it's the door supports the weight which is important. That tire is pretty heavy. This has a strut. Then you open this up. On the hard top, it is very, very simple. And let me get in here, because that's always our measure of space, right? Actually, on the floor door, this is a ton of room, dude. And I, you know, you can fit about two of me in here. Uh, really large space. Um, two Andres. Two Andres. Yes, I would say. All right, so the four-door Bronco was rated at two Andres for cargo space. Let's figure out what the two-door is like. So the hardtop is about the same operation, which is very nice. And then the two-door is rated at one Andre. The soft top configuration has a different entry option into the rear end. Obviously, the gate still swings out. And then there's these two latches 
this lifts up the whole rear end and then there's a little rod that comes down to keep it in position. Um, I don't know if I like it all that much to be honest with you. It's a little it's a little awkward, especially if you're trying to carry you know, groceries or something to, to undo both latches at the same time and then push it up, but um, that's how it works in the soft top. So the next question that was brought up to us is about interior space and the quality of the materials. And there are some notable things to say in this department. Now I have to say from a seat standpoint, the new Bronco is far better than the Wrangler. So this one is a wild track, but it's got cloth seats and I really like the cloth seats. Very comfortable and supportive. You can also get the Bronco in power seats, which you can't do on a Jeep, and you can get it with lumbar support on the passenger side, which is a big deal. Uh, it just, it makes passengering in a Bronco so much more comfortable and I wish that every vehicle had lumbar support on the passenger side as well, but it's a nice thing to have as an option. Now in terms of interior space, Obviously, I'm kind of a tall, lanky guy, not exactly all that wide. I fit in here very comfortably. I am six foot one if I ever sit up straight, and you can see when I do sit up straight, tons of headroom, very good shoulder room. Um, seat all the way back, much further than the Wrangler. So I actually struggle a little bit with the Wrangler and the Gladiator with the seating position not going far enough back, but on the uh, Ford Bronco, that doesn't seem to be an issue. What about material qualities? Well, I have to say overall, the interior design is nice. I, I like what they've done with the uh, blockiness, uh, the big Bronco across the dash. This one has a 12 inch screen and it looks quite nice. The buttons you touch feel good. So there's like a rubberized texture on the volume and the tune knobs, as well as the climate control knobs. Shifter feels good. Here, this is a nice kind of soft touch point here for your arms and over here. There are, several areas though where you can tell there's been some cost cutting so like the top of the dash looks nice but when you really start touching it i don't know it just doesn't feel all that high quality this grab handle this is the second one of the experience that has this it's just it's, it's it's good that it's there but it doesn't feel quite as secure as i would like it for some of the more clenchy off-road situations and then this panel here in the middle i asked them these are pre-production units but they said they're representative of the uh, final version i just don't like this material very much i mean it, it feels just chintzy in my opinion so some of the material qualities when you start poking around are a little bit suspect but the parts that you touch the steering wheel the door panel the door handles those all feel nice the second question was about uh, actually back seat space and obviously this is a four-door bronco right here and the front seat is actually pretty far back and i'm just over six two there's a cutout for my knees right here so it feels pretty nice my feet fit underneath the front seat and i have still very adequate uh, headroom in fact um, and it's also got this material for sound deadening uh, so that's pretty cool uh, so the back seat space is okay this one doesn't have a armrest in the middle but some do all right guys so we got about 200 questions from you about how it drives what the noise level is on the highway uh, how it drives off-road uh, this is not the video for that next week we have actually two videos that have all those driving impressions off-road and on-road but the mpg we do know um, epa published several different specs for several different configurations of the new bronco and it ranges from about 20 mpg city 22 highway 21 combined that's for a more of a street biased one to about 17 mpg combined for a badlands or a sasquatch so not class leading numbers there but that's a true off-roader Of course you can remove the doors on the new Bronco, either be it two-door or the four-door model. So Robbie's going to demonstrate it and actually show us how to remove the door. So you can see this is the pouch for the doors, right Robbie? Yep. So when they come off, they'll actually live in this little storage um, container or bag, I guess. And then they actually all line up vertically in the rear of the vehicle. Alright Robbie, so what's the, uh, the process to take the, the doors off? So first I noticed you rolled the windows down. Yes. Yes. First steps, the windows down. All right, now we're gonna grab our tool bag. We're gonna pop the mirror. Mirror's always gotta be in that position. And open the door. And if you look inside here, you will see a clip for the wiring harness. It's this big chunky one, I take it? Yep. 
there's a little door on the end of it, which I can show you once the door's off a little bit. You push it and it just pulls right out. So next stop, I grab my door bag. Oh, interesting. So the door is going to go in the bag while yeah, it's yeah, still it's on the vehicle? Make, it makes it yeah. easier to take it off. That's really interesting. And it's so you don't scratch it. Okay, right on. And is every door bag different? Or are they all specific? They're all specific to the door. Okay. That's why each one of them is labeled. Oh, I gotcha. So. Let's see. So. Oh, right. So the passenger, yes. this is the passenger Super front. Cool. That's the driver front. And then it shows the sequence of which they get stored in the back. And then this is like a felty material to yep. protect the paint. Super cool. All right. Now that we got the door bag on, you're going to notice right down here, if you pull this back, it says lift. There is a little handle right in there, a little pocket that you put your hand in. And then you also you grab right here, and it balances the door out so it's perfectly balanced. Okay, so next step, you open up your tool bag. You will grab a 13 millimeter socket and your ratchet to take the door bolts out. So these bolts go right inside your bag as well. Stick your bolts right in there, zip it up, put it in your glove box, and away you go. Would you say this is a one-person job removing a door? Yes. Okay. So it, it can be done by a single person. So from here on out, how do you remove it? So you grab down here at your lift, and you grab right here so it's perfectly balanced. And you simply just lift up, come over, set it down, and it just simply zips up. There you have it. So this is the electric connector right there uh, for the door. It's got a little like flap on it, huh? Yeah, so it's closed. So the bags do not immediately come with a bronc. You have to order them specially if you want to remove them, obviously. So, but the handy part, especially with the four door, because it has more cargo space in the back, is you can store all four doors right here. So Robbie's gonna help me uh, demonstrate how at least one of them fits. that and this is actually the second one so they have to go as you mentioned in order yes. um, but if you stack them up in order they will all fit back here yes correct I just wanted to see uh, if I can take this door out and see exactly you know what it feels like so I'm grabbing it like this you know it does have a little bit of weight to it but it's not too bad so when you go to put your door back on there's three main components this is a locator pin it actually screws into the bottom. And then also you take these two rubber things, you stick up here on your door, top, bottom, so you do not scratch the paint. And of course, a vehicle like this, the Bronco, is all about accessorizing, making it custom, making it your own. So, um, Ford says there are up to about 200 custom items, accessories, available at launch. For example, this rock guard for the side of the vehicle that mounts to the frame. And walk, walk over this way. Another very cool item, of course, are the tube doors. Uh, yeah, they're not very uh, inexpensive, about a thousand bucks for the two door. Let me show you the four-door one. Also, of course, a winch uh, from Warren. It comes with its own cradle. You can mount it to your front bumper, the modular one. Of course, different accessories. Like I said, about 200. And here's what a kind of a door looks like, a tube door looks like for a four-door model. And if, of course, you can get more speakers. Always more speakers and more safes for storing your stuff. So next up, we want to show something pretty cool on this Bronco. The fender flares are removable, but not in uh, the sense that you got to pull out your toolkit and start unscrewing stuff, but apparently they come off with just a few uh, half-turn latches. So Robbie's going to demonstrate that. Great if you're on the trail, you know, you ding one, um, you scratch one up, plop a new one on there. Okay, so you got these little quarter turns under here. Want to demonstrate it, Andre? 
these guys. Huh. You want to have them in the center position. Wow, look at that. So is replacing them just kind of the opposite? Yeah. All right, we just line it up. Pops right back on. Take your corner turns. You're all good to go. You might be wondering where we are and what's going on here. Well, this is one of the four off rodeos that Ford is putting up. It's called the Bronco Off Rodeo. Basically, every new 2021 Bronco uh, purchase price includes about a day and a half at a place like this. This one is in Austin, Texas. And check it out. This is basically a place where the owners of the new Bronco can come and actually test uh, one of Ford's Broncos on a variety of different terrain and learn about the four-wheel drive systems, learn about, about all the features, and then go home and enjoy their vehicle. There you go, your question's answered. To be totally transparent, Ford did fly us out here to Austin um, and allow us to play with the Bronco, but we only had a few hours with the vehicle and we produced, I think, seven videos. Um, so we're, uh, we're a little fried here, so I apologize if the energy level isn't where it typically is, but it's been one hell of a day and a half, and um, we're going to have to make sure to get this vehicle back to Colorado to really put it through some thorough tests. Check out the fuel economy versus the Wrangler and the Defender, take them off-road, take them to Moab, all that coming very soon, but Andre and I are like, we're, we're tired or we're sunburned. We're going to go do one more video and then we're done, I promise. But as always, check out TFL Car, TFLoffroad.com for the latest and greatest in Bronco Week reviews. This has been a great week, but it's been a hell of a week.